it sends a really dangerous message to people that if you stand up for yourself, if you don't take a deal because you want public vindication, if you embarrass the police, if you embarrass the system, if you embarrass the government, and even if you self-represent against a team of professional lawyers and win your case, you will still lose in the end because you didn't do what everyone else does. They take a deal behind closed doors. We save all the embarrassment that could be had in a public trial. That's what they want people to do. One of Australia's most fearless freedom fighters from the COVID era has finally had her day in court for three arrests during the COVID madness here in Melbourne. Now, we caught up with Monica Smith during the trial, and we also caught up with the lead witness, the commanding officer in charge of those arrests, who during the case had nothing to say. How you doing, sir? How you going? Do you want to apologise to Victorians for what Victoria Police did during COVID? There we go. So Victoria Police, absolute contempt to Victorians. The case is now over and joining us now to share the results. Monica Smith, thank you for joining us. How'd you go in court? I got exactly what I wanted, Avi, which was public vindication. Um, I couldn't get an apology, of course, but uh, winning your case is basically the same thing as an apology, even though it's forced. So um, I proved to the court that two out of the three arrests were unlawful. Um, so I guess you could say I won 66.6667% of the case. And uh, if your viewers don't already know, I self-represented against a whole team of lawyers, uh, two barristers and two solicitors, and a whole firm back at the office supporting them. And it was just little old me there on my own, and I won. So it's, it's quite... Um, an exciting verdict, I would say. But it's not all good news because I've been following closely what's happened. And yes, you've been vindicated. But after that vindication was had, what were you hit with? So it has costed me, well, it could cost me uh, up to and over $250,000 for the pleasure of winning my case. It does sound crazy, but let me explain. It won't take long. Um, basically, I got offered $15,000 before the trial to avoid going to trial. Uh, my counter offer was, I don't care about the money. I want a public apology, like Arvi from Rebel News got, for example. And they refused to give me any, so any sort of accountability, public apology, or even, a, even they didn't even offer me a private apology, by the way. And because it wasn't about the money for me, I had to go to trial to get that public vindication, which I got. However, the judge only awarded me $4,000 in damages for two unlawful arrests. Basically, it seemed like uh, it was because I gathered myself together so well, and I'm not a mental wreck that I should not get as much damages. But anyway, because I was offered $15,000, by to not go to trial and the judge awarded me only $4,000. According to the court system, I basically lost in their eyes because I could have achieved a better outcome and avoided trial. However, my argument was then and is still now that I wanted the public vindication. I could not get that in mediation. I tried to get it and that's why I went to trial and I've gotten what I wanted. So I think the outcome is more favorable than mediation, but the court system doesn't agree. So yes, I've been ordered to pay $250,000 to the losing team um, for the pleasure of, well, I wouldn't say the pleasure, I would also say for the audacity to reject their offer. Now, can I just clarify, is the reason the cost order, so they offered you in mediation to settle on $15,000, you didn't accept it, was that, did you not accept it because the, the other terms of the settlement were unacceptable to you? Is that right? It just it came with no accountability. So they weren't going to apologize like they did to me or anything like that? That's right. And they maintained that they lawfully arrested me three times, that they did nothing wrong. They did say that I could talk about the deal. I could talk about the $15,000 being given to me, et cetera. But that's not a talking point for me at all. Um, I wanted the public vindication. And that's why I said no. You wanted people you know, to know that they were, what they did was in fact unlawful, which we now do know that at least two of them were. Exactly. So they were wrong on that count. And I got to be honest, the $15,000, the money itself 
didn't really play a role for me. However, I will say that $15,000 for three unlawful arrests and 45 minutes in the back of a police van for no reason. I thought I thought that that was a pretty insulting number. It wouldn't have made a difference if it was higher, but I think it was reasonable for me to say no to that amount. And just for the record, even if all three arrests were deemed unlawful, the judge said out loud that she would have only awarded $5,000 in damages for the other arrest, which means it would have only been $9,000 in damages for three arrests and 45 minutes in a divvy van handcuffed for over an hour and 40 minutes. She would have only awarded me $9,000, which is still $6,000 less than, than my offer. So your audience needs to remember, even if I won all three arrests, 100% of the case, I would still have a cost order of $250,000. And this is absolutely atrocious. You can win a case in Victoria against the state. And even if you fully win it and represent yourself doing it, you can walk away with a bill of almost two hundred fifty, over $200,000. What message do you think that sends to the public it sends a really dangerous message to people that if you stand up for yourself, if you don't take a deal because you want public vindication, if you embarrass the police, if you embarrass the system, if you embarrass the government, and even if you self-represent against a team of professional lawyers and win your case, you will still lose in the end because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You didn't do what everyone else does. They take a deal behind closed doors. We save all the embarrassment that could be had in a public trial. That's what they want people to do. So that is why I will definitely have to appeal this because I don't want people to be afraid to pursue justice. And even worse, if they pursue justice and win, that they're gonna end up losing in the end anyway. I actually finished this trial, RV, feeling like I got a fair trial. I thought the judge was very fair and patient, and she was during the trial. And I wanted to leave this experience saying, there is still hope in the judicial system. And, and isn't this great? We got a fair hearing and all this stuff. But then to be slapped with a $250,000 bill for the pleasure of winning has made me question the whole system. She did have the discretion to not award any cost to the other side, regardless of me rejecting the offer and so forth. And she chose to slap me so hard right near the end after awarding me two of the unlawful arrests. And it is just, it's a crazy thing. And what has actually happened is it's highlighted this. I don't think people knew that this could happen. I didn't really know that this could happen either. Do you regret it? Do you wish you took that deal now? Oh, hell no. <laughs> no way. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't because like I said, it highlights that this sort of situation can happen. I have said many times that I'm willing to lose everything to stand up for my rights because it's not just my rights. There were hundreds and thousands of people arrested unlawfully during pro-freedom rallies. They all deserve justice. And if I can set a strong case law, a strong precedent, then we could have hundreds of people just like me going through the court system for unlawful arrest based on my case law. And what I would say to you out there, don't be afraid of the cost order that I got. That only happened to me because I refused to take a deal because I have a public profile and I wanted to make a public point. If you don't have a profile, then you can just take the deal. Don't be afraid to take the deal. No one's going to judge you. We all have different lives and different um, things that we're supposed to do for the movement. This is what I'm supposed to do. And I have so many more cases coming up and that's basically my job now. So let me do it. And can I just put on the record quickly that I do understand why the Calder Bank offers exist. Um, if every single person went to court, then the court systems would be completely chock-a-block. I understand that. But uh, my argument against that is that because I have a public profile and because I was doing it for public vindication and also for the rest of the people who got um, arrested and things like that, the Calder Bank offer shouldn't apply to me because of the nature of the case. If you think it's important for the world to know what's happened to one of our bravest freedom fighters here in Australia, make sure to like, comment, but most importantly, share it far and wide. Because Monica's story is of public interest. Remember, she was arrested, unlawfully at least twice now, 
for daring to stand up to the state. And now, when she fought to clear her name, which she did, well, she slapped with another punishment again. And then head over to fightthefiance.com.au. That's where we'll keep you up to date with her case and her appeal and all the others still going on in the name of your health. Fightthefiance.com.au. It's all there.